God works. This is an undeniable fact. Despite believers, God works, which in itself is an amazing fact. Perhaps this is the purpose of the inclusion of the story of Jonah in scripture and Jesus mentioning the prophet by name. Despite our prejudices and biases and conflicting, sometimes rabid, politicking, God always works to save those who truly call on his name and then honestly live by it. Thank you so much for joining us. We have some wonderful guests with us today. Please introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Angela. It's nice to be here. I'm Rob. And I'm John. Awesome. So, Angela, can you read the scripture for us, which is found in Acts 10, 34 and 35, and then offer prayer? Sure. Um, the scripture reading says, then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. And then if it's okay, I'll pray real quick in Portuguese. Awesome. Right. Querido Pai do Céu, queremos agradecer por esse dia e por esse estúdio. Ajuda-nos a entender melhor sua palavra. Seu nome pedimos. Amém. Amen. The Jonah Saga. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> That's saga music, right? <laughs> it sounds just like it. Okay. <laughs> we are in the fourth week of biblical missionaries. And Jonah is a pretty interesting book, what would you say? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. a short one, too. So it's a good read, but it's a really deep book, I found. Uh, am I, I hope I'm not alone in that, but I found it to be pretty deep. Really intense emotions. A lot of emotions went into Jonah. Now... What would you say is the central point of the story of Jonah? I would say the central point of the story of Jonah is really getting into listening to God's call and, and, and his direction and following through. I mean, when you look at it, yes, you know, he did go to Nineveh, he did evangelize, but it was, it, they took a lot of time to talk about what he did before he got there. Hmm. you know, the journey it took. And so I, I think it's that journey that we have as Christians that's, a central, that's, that's the central point of Jonah that, that, you know, God will ask us to do something. He'll, he'll tell us to go somewhere. He'll tell us to be involved in something. And, you know, we have a choice. We, we can either go directly there and do it or we can be like Jonah and, and you know, try to walk away and get away and, and, until God has to rein, rein us back in. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. What else, did anybody get another central point from the story of Jonah? I think along the same line, I kind of feel like there's two parts of the story. One is Jonah, which we spend most of the time focusing on, but then the other is his actual message. But I'd say the central point of the whole book is that God gets his messages out there. Mm. He uses us and it's our privilege to be used to help him get his word out but it's gonna get out there, hmm. no matter how much we mess up or how much we run away or, hmm. I don't know, I feel like Jonah is a good example of all of those things. <laughs> Thank you, Angela. Yeah. Rob, what, you, what are you gonna say? I think, yeah, God works in spite of us. I, th I think um, when, you, when you look at the story of Jonah, it seems like he didn't really want to succeed. He didn't really want the city to repent or whatever. Um, mm. I mean, I suppose if you know about the, the history, um, the Assyrian kingdom, I mean, they were not nice to many people. <laughs> uh, That's putting them mildly. <laughs> right, yes. Uh, they were pretty mean. Um, so why wouldn't you have personal feelings about that? Why wouldn't you have anger and um, disappointment and rage and all of those things, desire for revenge. Um, so he, 
here's a person who is preaching a message that he doesn't even believe in. Um, but it worked. God made it work. Um, so we try to, I guess, mold God into, or we try to make him do something we want him to do, but he's, he's going to accomplish his purpose in That's, spite of us, I think. Go ahead. I was going to say, you know, you brought up something very interesting there when you talked about, you know, they were not a people that Jonah really wanted to go to. And the fact is that many of the places God sends us, we don't really want to go. They're in situations that we don't want to go into. I mean, when, when I think about so many of the missions that, you know, that are occurring around the world. They're in places that are impoverished. They're places where wars are occurring. They're places where you can, you know, you, most people don't want to be in. You know, when you're in a comfortable situation like Jonah, you don't want to, you don't want to go somewhere that's really uncomfortable where, where, you know, when you get there, you may not be well received. You know, Jonah could have been killed for the message that he had to bring. Right. And so knowing that it, it makes it very difficult, you know, as a Christian to, to, to be willing to go. And I, and I think that, that, um, la, therein lies the central message there is, is that willingness to go even when the destination is not friendly. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Because in Jonah, it's, Jonah was supposed to say that in 40 days, Nineveh is going to be destroyed. It's going to be overthrown. And so I guess it seemed as if, just going off of what the both of you were saying, he was thinking that he was going to do one message and then it turned around that they repented and went back and all of that changed, and then God let him live. Mm -hmm. And Jonah got really upset about that. Like, he got really angry about that. And I like the point that you made, Rob, because I think sometimes I know I look at things in the world and I feel, well, why is that given? Why are they given a second chance? And why is this happening? This was, they were so evil, they were so this, and I want to determine mm -hmm. what should happen. But God says, no, I have a plan for everybody. Really, 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 really interesting. Now, Jonah has been described as the most successful missionary in the Old Testament. How do you, how do you feel about this idea? How do you respond to that? I, I'm not sure if we're supposed to somehow be agreeing with that, but <laughs> I would say he wasn't necessarily the most successful missionary. I would say he, was, he had the most successful message because I don't think it was him. I mean, he went, but he was kind of dragged there or spit up there. <laughs> but it wasn't, I don't know. I feel like so much of this wasn't on his own will, but his message was still incredibly successful and it reached people that nobody would have expected to be touched mm. by it either. And. I don't know. Does anybody actually think he's a successful missionary? <laughs> well, when I first looked at the question, you know, I had those same, those same thoughts as well, you know, wondering, you know, is it really that he was a successful missionary or is it, you know, something else? And I, I do agree with you, Angela, that it, it's really more of the, the message. It's, you know, he, yes, was he a missionary? Yes. But he didn't, he, he didn't follow through with his mission initially. And so, but if you discount all of what he went through before he actually went to, to Nineveh, then I, then I could say, yes, he, he was you know, one of the most successful mm -hmm. missionaries. The message that he brought changed an entire nation of people and, and caused them to repent. And when you look at the history of, you know, the message that the Israelites were given, you know, they'd repent and then, you know, quickly, <laughs> quickly, you know, within a... We'll be good you know, today. <laughs> yes. A couple of years. Yeah. You know, they're back to doing the same things mm -hmm. they were doing before. So I think... In that aspect, his, he was very successful because he was able to to really make an impact on their lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I, uh, I wish that you know the story almost glosses over the success of the ministry part, and, mm -hmm. and I mean this story seems to be primarily about Jonah, um, mm -hmm. even though it's uh, well, it's a well, it's about many things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm just giving my opinion, I guess. But um, <clears throat> I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. Uh, you know, I, I just want to, and when you get when you get it back, let us know because we'll come right back to it. Yeah, yeah. But I've, that that part about, I don't know. I'm going to have to say I kind of think he is probably one of the most successful missionaries in the Old Testament. 
Well, you asked the question. I so asked the I question. <laughs> I didn't write the question, but I asked the question. But even in the process of it, I was kind of thinking, I said at the end of the story, 120,000 people came mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. to God. They were supposed to be destroyed. Within 40 days, they were supposed to be done. And 120,000 people, on the hearing of <clears throat> Jonah's words, because did, we know Jonah, in the story, when he went into the whale, he still went back, or into the fish, sorry, into the fish. <laughs> he went back and he still repented. He did repent, and he did offer himself back. He didn't have to. Can we agree he didn't, I mean, right. he didn't have to, and he God could have just again. said, well, you stay inside the fish, or I'm gonna spit you out and I'll just get somebody else. But he still, Jonah repented, which allowed for him to be still used to go forward. But at the end, 120,000 people. First of all, I don't know when the last time I've been 100, around 120,000 people. <laughs> but that's a big number. What, I mean, what do you have? Just any thoughts? It's hard to call him a successful missionary just because we see so much of his backstory and all the ways he kind of messed up and all of his mistakes. Mm -hmm. But I would say it was probably the most successful um, mission mm. and probably the most successful message in the Old Testament because it reached so many people and it did make a big difference, but it's hard to pin all that success on Jonah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I agree with you if I look at the entire picture of Jonah, but if I look at Jonah just from the standpoint of, you know, what did he do once he came out of the fish, once he repented, mm -hmm. then, you know, he went straight to Nineveh, he, he completed the mission that he was given, and, and many lives were brought to, back to uh, God at that point. So I think, you know, if you look at that, he was a successful missionary. Um, he took the longer road to get there, but not all missionaries go the, the straight and narrow route. Some people go the long kind of winding road to get to where they need, where God needs them to be. So I think looking at that, Jonah was very successful. Right. I think in the concept of missionary bringing somebody, bringing, helping to be the vessel to bring people to Christ, I'm going to think that he is probably was one of the most successful in the Old Testament. More than 120,000 people came back and gave their lives to Christ. And I don't know within the Old Testament we've seen that number. So, mm -hmm. and he didn't have to do it. I mean, the truth of the matter is, is that we know God can use anybody, but he did repent when he was inside of that fish and came back around and was like, I'm sorry, I wanna be used. And so when he got to the land, he went ahead and did what God had told him to do. So that's my thought, but what do I really know? So <laughs> we hope something at least. <laughs> Though few of us have ever been swallowed by a fish. Has anybody been swallowed by a fish? Goldfish bit me once. <laughs> <laughs> but few of us have ever been swallowed by a fish. How is it possible that we may be subjected to similar but less extreme experiences? Well, when I think about it, I think about my own personal walk. Mm -hmm. um, I've been a Christian, you know, I, I was baptized at a young age, and over time I started to, to fall away from what I knew. Mm -hmm. You know, I was starting to do things that I shouldn't do, going, hanging out with people I shouldn't hang around, and just ignoring the message that I, I knew what God's calling was for me in my life. I knew it, you know, even at the age of 18, I, I knew what it was, mm -hmm. and I just ran. And I admit, you know, that I ran. I knew I was running. But eventually, you know, God brought me to a place where I could just hear him. You know, I, he had to bring me to, to a place where there, were, there was no one around. You know, I didn't have the, you know, the friends that or so-called friends weren't around that were encouraging me to go the wrong way. He brought me to a place where it was just he and I. And I could hear him. And so I think, you know, in our lives, we all get those kind of experiences where we, we God brings us to a, a place of solitude. You know, I think of it, you know, how Jesus was, you know, when he needed to get answers, he went to be alone. Mm -hmm. God often speaks to us when we're alone because then there's nothing to distract us. We don't have the world. We don't have technology. We don't have anything else but God to listen to. And so I think for me, that was my experience. You know, I, I got to that place and I, I told God, hey, you know what? I'm going to listen. I'm going to do what you want me to do. Mm -hmm. Just tell me, just lead me, and I'll follow. Hmm. Rob, any Jonah experiences for you? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think it, 
we all have um, experiences like that. I mean, it's the idea of running and changing your mind or being brought around to, mm. you know, deciding to actually do the thing that you didn't want to do before. Mm. And there are, there are those experiences. It could be somebody, it doesn't have to be dramatic. It could be as simple as somebody says something to you some, that sticks with you, mm. you know, um, or just a, a quiet moment of inspiration or something that you have. Uh, that um, you can choose to see as God working, or you can choose to see as mm -hmm. chance or something random that happened. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes you don't, maybe you don't see it until years later. You don't realize, mm -hmm. you know, wow, that was something that was a pretty, pretty low chance that that could happen, but mm -hmm. it did, and it really changed the course of my life. So. Um, something specific, I can't think of it. But that's pretty good. Thank you, John, and thank you, Rob, for that. Because in the end of it, what I'm hearing from both of you all, it was still a choice as well. Yeah, and definitely. that's something that we can get from Jonah, that it's a choice to decide whether or not we're going to follow God or not. Mm -hmm. He's going to try everything to get us on the path. I mean, he took, <laughs> he got thrown, can you imagine he got thrown off a boat <laughs> and then picked up by a fish and had to sit in there for a couple of days, just quiet. But that's God's love that despite, and it might seem like it was a difficult time, but that's his love that he really wants us to be in his will because he knows what the end result will be from all of that, mm -hmm. that lives will be changed, including ours, if we right. just live in his will. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys for that. What principles of outreach and evangelism may we take away to Jonah's experience in Nineveh? Oh, there's so many lessons. <laughs> <laughs> um, piggybacking on the last thought mm -hmm. of our Jonah experiences, I think a lot of times those moments of solitude, and for me it's usually um, a natural consequence mm. sort of thing, like Ironically, when I was in the mission field, I got really sick because I was overworking myself. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, I'd get stuck in bed recovering, but that's also when I'd reconnect with God. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the many lessons that we learn about outreach and mission is that God needs to be connected with us. Mm -hmm. Yes, good things will still come even if we're working and we aren't you know, where we need to be with him, he'll still make things happen. But I think that's the first priority mm. is to connect with us, to be with us, to have the moment in that relationship. And then from there, take the message to people that need it, even when it's scary. But I'm sure that's another lesson. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and then, Angela, I think in conjunction with that, you also have to look at um, in chapter 3, it starts off with verse 1, and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. And so it's important in mission and outreach that we have heard what God's message is. You know, mm -hmm. far too often I've seen situations where a good idea comes up and, oh, this sounds great. It looks great, but did it come from God? Mm -hmm. And so when you're trying to reach, to, reach other people, it's not going to be fruitful if you're not, if God is not talking to you and guiding you through that process. It's mm -hmm. critically important because the best, you know, as they say, the, the best laid plans, you know, can, can become, you know, worthless if, yeah. if you don't have that direction. And so I think that's something that's really key there. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can only take it so far, but God can take it so much farther. Mm -hmm. Exactly. God wants to save everyone. I mean, that seems like it should be a given, but <laughs> apparent, I mean, it's not really. I, it's easy to look at Jonah and say, man, this guy was, he was a bad guy. Um, but I think any of us have the potential to be that way yeah. um, just because we like certain people and we don't like other people and we hold grudges and we're, we're just imperfect. Mm -hmm. um, but God wants to reach everyone. That is so true. That is so true, Rob, because, you know, I've caught myself sometimes in situations and you, you look at someone or you, you have an interaction with someone and you just think, man, I don't know how God is going to deal with that person. Mm. But the truth is, every, you know, God wants to save everyone in there. Everyone has a chance at salvation. 
And that's important to remember as you're reaching out to people because sometimes they're not going to be receptive the first time around. You know, I go out um, sometimes and, and do homeless ministry and, you know, some of the individuals, you know, you'll see them take the food and they'll look in the bag and throw out what they don't want to keep. And you look at that and you go, well, I'm out here trying to help you. Why are you throwing, you know, why are you treating this as if it's worthless? But you have to think about the fact that, you know, it's, it doesn't always work the first time around, but as people see you being consistent, as you're consistently reaching out and doing things, others will begin to look at look at you and say, well, you know what, That's, this person's genuine. They're not just here for recognition. They're not just here to, to feel good about themselves, but they're here because they care. And that's, I think, something that became evident once Jonah repented is that, you know, afterwards, you know, of course, he, he, he felt the way he did, but when he went, he felt like, all right, God, you know, there's something for these people and I'm going to do what I need to do until you tell me to stop. Mm -hmm. And I think he especially had a message that it would be so easy to look at God and say, they don't want to hear this. Like, I mean, his <laughs> message is basically, you're all going to be destroyed, right? In 40 days. That's a horrible <laughs> message to take for one. And he's already judging how they're going to react. Hmm. For one, he doesn't like them, but for two, he's, already made that assumption. Well, they're going to get angry. They'll probably try and kill me. This isn't going to go well. Whereas so many times we try and figure out what God is doing mm. or why he's doing something instead of just doing what we're called to do. Because I think God knew that the people were ready to hear this message. Mm -hmm. And God determines the worthiness. Like yeah. we can't place that classification on, well, I think you don't look as bad. <laughs> you're not cussing, you know, you're not cursing or doing these things. So I think you're, you're probably one he wants to save. Like God's worthy and who he determines is worthy is who he determines is worthy. And he looks at all of us and says, you know, I'm not looking just here or on these types of things if you smell bad or if you look bad or if you have, if you're, if you appear to hate or so forth. My message can permeate through anything, yeah. anything. I just, I really, I like that about, about the story. His message can permeate through anything. Just do what I say to do. Yeah. <laughs> I need you to play your part and then I'll mm -hmm. do my part. And that's where it comes in and that's what he does. And I, I, I enjoy that. So many good points, self-care, you know, I, I, I I really like that point that you part that point that you brought up because we have to make sure that we are connected to God or else we're going to be lost in what we're trying to do. Yeah. Can I say one other thing? Absolutely. Um, I because uh, we were talking about Jonah being possibly the most successful missionary, and I think mm -hmm. just uh, kind of to go back to that. I, th I mean, this is another lesson to be learned about mission work. Is mm -hmm. that there is sort of a, an inherent arrogance, I guess, that can come from the idea that we are sent to minister mm -hmm. to the world. I mean, I believe it's true, but just because we're human beings, we fall into, like, I will save you. I'm sent here to save you. And then when you look at Jonah, 120,000 people. More than. And the one guy, <laughs> more than 120,000 people. <laughs> but the one he couldn't save is himself. Mm -hmm. He's the only one who really didn't get it. Um, so, yeah, I think we just have to be very careful. That's a, yeah. that's a, that's a very, very yeah. interesting point. It, all of these things can go out and, you know, at the end we could say, you know, Lord, did we prophesy? Lord, did we do all of these things? And he could say, I don't know you at the end of it because we have to make sure that we get it as well. Exactly. That's, I, I didn't think of that. Exactly. Right. And actually, you know, bring, when he brought back up the, the question of uh, being successful, I thought about it. When you look at the scripture, it talks about when the word went to the king, he immediately hmm. basically was, was, impre it was impressed upon his heart to change. And when you think about mission, mission work and outreach, you know, you know as I said before, it sometimes, oftentimes it takes more than once. You know, very, very rarely does someone hear the word and the first time they go, you know what, yeah. I've got to change. You know, I think about it in, in church when, when the pastor makes the appeal. You know, oftentimes, you know, there are people who are sitting there and, they, and they'll come service after service after service and not answer the call. Mm. But here, an entire group of people 
a nation of people over, you know, more than 120,000 people hear it in the first time, hmm. the very first time. Media. I mean, that, that shows the awesome power of God to change that many people mm -hmm. simultaneously. Mm -hmm. It's not like it was, you know, a few one month, a few another month, but just in three days, you know, mm -hmm. it, it just makes me think about, um, you know, stories that my, my mother-in-law has told me about, you know, crusades that she had seen, you know, in the islands, in the Caribbean, and how it's just so many people would just give their lives to Christ right then and there. And, you know, it would just be great to just have been able to be there to mm -hmm. see that just to see that display of God's power. I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's powerful, it's, it's moving, it's life-changing. You know, there's nothing more I can say about it, honestly. <laughs> it is powerful. God's message doesn't, the timeline that we put on it sometimes too, is it's really our timeline or how we time frame. God's message will do what he needs to do right when he needs to do it if we are truly vessels. I just believe we're truly vessels, and, and I'm glad that Jonah was a vessel. You know, Jonah is similar to a lot of us. We go back and forth, and we're, you know, we, we move along, and it's fluid, and we don't always stay passionate or all of these things, but I liked how Jonah was able to come back and be used. And even at the end of it, you know, he came back, and he asked the question. He was kind of upset, but God said at the end of it, should I not pity Nineveh? this great city. And when he talked about the whole thing with, um, with the livestock, he said, should I not pity Nineveh? Why not? If you, if we care about cattle, if we care about all these different little things. Why not for human beings? And at the end of it, the God is all about human beings. He's about love for us. Um, beside Jonah, give one other Bible character that God used despite their personality flaws. All of them. <laughs> like, you got Moses, you have David. You know. I mean, they were all yeah. pretty flawed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Paul. Yeah. Paul was one of the most flawed individuals in the Bible. I mean, he he was persecuting and a part of the, the group just, mm -hmm. you know, killing Christians. And then all of a sudden, one day on, on the road to Damascus, mm -hmm. life changes. And now he's being used as one of the greatest messengers of, of the gospel truth. It's, it, it's absolutely amazing. It's, that's one of the things that we know is that, and it's hope for us, that with all of our flaws, God can still use us. If you would like to contact us, I, first, thank you all. I appreciate you guys, and this was such a great discussion. Thank you. If you would like to contact us, please visit our website at www.sabbathschoolu.org. That's www.sabbathschool the letter U dot org. Remember, the goal of Bible study is information and transformation. It's for the head and it's for the heart. For Sabbath School U, I'm Janelle Phillip. Mm -hmm.